My name is Emily, I am 19 years old and this is my story about how I came to get my private pilot licence. So for me it all started when I was 16 years old. I just left school, had no idea what I wanted to do and I was just sitting in the living room one day when EasyJet Inside the Cockpit came on. The first series, this was 2017. That was the moment that in my head that was like that's what I want to do. And I'd love to say why, it's just a feeling that hasn't gone away. <laughs> so then I went to sixth form to study my A-levels. I did maths, physics and psychology. You don't need A-levels to be a, a commercial pilot, you need five GCSEs as it currently stands. Um, but I just found that those three subjects would be the ones that would help me the most with my studies. I finished my A-levels when I was 18, at which point I decided to go down the university route. So I went down to Buckinghamshire the University, where we do um, air transport with commercial pilot training degree. So they kind of help you through your um, practical training, as well as give a theoretical side to the industry, which is airline and airport management and operations and that is a BSc three year degree. What they do in the first year is they recommend you go to a local airfield, to a local school, um, to try and get your PPL within the first year of the degree. However, COVID hit, we went into lockdown and I left that first school having 15 out of the 45 required hours to get a PPL. So what happened was I went six months at home, I didn't fly once. And that was until my head of first year, Neil Hawkyard, he said, Emily, why don't you go to Alma? They have a fast track option. Um, because at this point, time was ticking, you know, I had to start my second year of university, which is going off site to a separate school, which does ATPL or ground school. And that's the entirety of the second year of my degree. So I was starting that on 4th of November. And at this point, it was mid-August. And on the 3rd of September, I started training at Alma in Coventry. Um, I did have to convert from the 152 to the PA28, but that wasn't an issue that I found at all. So from starting in Coventry on the 3rd of September, 2020, I had my first solo flight on the 10th of September. After what was it, I think only four days of flying at Alma after a six month hiatus, I was very happy with that. <laughs> and then I passed my skills test on the 3rd of November, so the day after that, I moved down to Oxford to start my ATPLs. So I found the timing to be just right, <laughs> it was amazing. The PA28 that I was in, Hotel Fox, that was essentially completely available for the entirety of my training there which meant that I would often be doing two to three hours a day, five days a week so it really is intense, you don't have time to forget what you've done, you can just keep going and in that way because you don't have to keep recapping it is a financially viable option. So in terms of what I found the easiest, personally for me that was converting aircraft type and getting to know the local area. Um, Coventry is a lovely place to fly out of because it's not too quiet, it's not too busy. You get the best of both worlds there. You have very identifiable landmarks, so if you're worried about getting lost, don't worry. Also, Coventry is situated inside the Birmingham controlled airspace. So you do get the very good idea of how important it is to stick to certain altitudes and I feel like that's a good experience to have when you're training. I mean, I think the hardest thing for me personally was the fact that I'm a very self-critiquing person. So if something ever did go wrong, I would always dwell on it. And that kind of comes into the advice that I would give anyone. You've kind of just got to move on and learn from it rather than thinking about it because that will put you in a bad room. I don't want to sound too cliche, but if I would do anything differently, then I would have gone to Alma sooner. 
because I gave myself a very short amount of time to get my PPL because I had the restriction of starting my second year. Um, so all of the time pressure, that came solely from me, but all the guys at LMAT did was kind of reassure me and make it easier and more comfortable and it really was a family environment. I cannot wait to go back and fly in on my own license. <laughs> That's crazy to say. The best piece of advice that I can give right now to anyone who's thinking about starting their pilot training is that no two pilots journey is ever the same. Everybody will go through different ups and downs but those who are really passionate about it they will stick at it no matter what. Some things will get you down sometimes but that's all part of the growing and learning to be a good pilot, learning to deal with situations that you're not happy or comfortable with, and that's the biggest lesson that I've learned, honestly. So now, as for the future, I'm currently at Leading Edge Aviation down in Oxford doing my ATPL grammar school. Um, since being at Almat, I've got my night rating when I'm down here in Oxford. I'm looking to do my IRR and then come October I'll be doing my final year of university then going on to all my commercial training which will be really fun and I don't really know what I want to do whether that be airlines or cargo or just, just some of that will work itself out as I go along I hope. <laughs> so yeah I hope that was at least somewhat informative and don't forget to follow Almat on all social medias. Come fly with them, I highly recommend.